Hi students, one thing that you're going to have to be able to do in this class is take an equation that represents demand, an equation that represents supply, and graph them on an XY plane, or in the case of supply and demand, a P and Q plane. So what we're going to do today is we're going to start off with a couple of equations, and I'm going to show you how to graph them and then find the equilibrium. Now let's start off with the information that I would give you, which would be two equations. What your first step would be is trying to figure out which one is demand and which one is supply. So if we start off with trying to figure out which one is demand. Uh, what we do know is that demand is downward sloping. What downward sloping really means is just that it's going to have a negative slope. What we do know about these equations that we're looking at is they are in the y equals mx plus b format. And in this y equals mx plus b format, we know that the m is our slope. So let's draw our graph, our xy plane, and then we can talk about what's y and what's x. Hopefully by now you know that on the y-axis we have price and on the x-axis we have the quantity. That's how we're going to be graphing supply and demand because we want to understand the relationship between price and quantity, both demanded and supplied. And remember that a graph is simply just a relationship between two different variables. So now that we know that our y is P and our X is Q, that must mean whatever is attached to the X must be the slope. So since this is a negative two right here, this must be demand because it has a negative slope. All right, so we need a little bit of side work to actually figure out how to graph these. So we're gonna start with the demand equation. Remember the demand equation is simply just P equals 100 minus two Q. And so how do we graph this? Well, we know this is going to be linear. It doesn't have any sort of exponent to make this all curvy like. We know it's gonna be linear and we know the demand curve is going to be downward sloping. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna find two points and connect them. The two points we're gonna find will be the P when Q equals zero and when P equals zero. So let me color code these. We'll start with a red and we'll do when Q equals zero. So that's gonna fall somewhere up here on the P axis. And so when Q equals zero, that would be P equals 100 minus two times zero. So P must equal 100. So you see how when Q equals zero, that's gotta be at the origin of Q equaling zero and so P must be 100. Now I'll go with a different color, let's go with green, to show when P equals zero. Well, when P equals zero, again, we're looking at the origin of P equals zero, it must be somewhere along here on Q. And so if we look when P equals zero, that's gonna be zero equals 100 minus two Q. Now I can solve for this by adding 2q to both sides. 2q equals 100. And then divide both sides by 2, I get q equal to 50. So I know that when p equals 0, q has to equal 50. So we have it looking like this right here. Now we know two points. And we know that this is linear. So what we can do is we can just go ahead and draw the straight line that connects the two and label it D for demand. Now that we have the demand curve, let's work on the supply curve. So we go back over the side work. We know that our supplied curve is P equals 10 plus Q. And so again, we're gonna use red to try and figure out when Q equals zero. That's usually the easier one. P equals 10 plus Q equals zero. And so P is just going to simply equal 10. And we know when Q equals zero, it's going to be right here. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to figure out the point when P equals zero. Now, since we already know this point over here, 
We really don't need the point when p equals zero because we know this is gonna be upward sloping and it's gonna look something like this. But I just wanna show the math for the first time, but from now on you don't need to do that. So let's look when p equals zero. So that would be zero equals 10 plus q. And then if I take away 10 from both sides, I'd get q actually equals to negative 10. So what that means is I have to extend this out to the left put a little dot here and this would be negative 10. But as I spoke about before, we don't work in any quadrant other than the first quadrant for supply and demand. So what that means is that it would come down like this, but we don't really care about this. I'll make it dotted. We really wanna start here and just be upward sloping and that's our supply curve. So the idea of the equilibrium is where these two lines cross. And so we're just going to set the equations equal to each other. And so we have 100 minus 2q, which is our demand equation, equal to 10 plus q, which is our supply equation. Let's go ahead and take away 10 from both sides. And let's add 2q to both sides. And what we're going to get is we're going to get 90 equals to 3q. If we divide both sides by 3, you can see that q is going to equal 30. This point right here must then be 30. The equilibrium quantity is going to be 30. But what's the equilibrium price in this market? Well, we just have to take this and just plug it in. Plug it into whichever equation you want. I'm going to use a supply equation because it's easier. P equals 10 plus Q, which is 30, which equals 40. Now just for practice, I'm gonna also plug it into demand, which is gonna equal 100 minus two times 30, which is 60, which equals 40. So you can see how they are equal. It's 40 or it's 40. So that must mean that P equals 40. So this is 40. And there you have it. We've graphed supply and demand and we found the equilibrium.